So continuing our discussion from last week, I'm gonna go more into multiple dispatch and do some more examples and also show a little bit of how we can extend unit full. If you haven't seen last week's video, right up there right now. Before we go into that, please give this video a like and subscribe. I have timestamps and links that are relevant to the video on the description below. So if you need to look for something specific, it's all down there and let's go on with the video. So last week I did my own struct and then had different area functions and that's how I was showing some variation of multiple dispatch, but really that was more of method overloading. Now this is kind of similar, but this is more showing with multiple arguments. So you can see I have function A in three different examples. One is a vector taking a vector, another one is taking a scalar, an array, and then the other one is taking a vector and a matrix. Now the operation that it's doing is entirely different depending on what you insert into the function. So one I'm doing a cross product between the vectors, the other one I'm multiplying the scalar to the array, and then the other one I'm multiplying the matrix times the vector. So then in the main function, I'm just putting up some example code and we're gonna run this. Okay, so here you can see it's doing the first function, it's doing the cross product, it's producing the cross of these first two vectors of one, two, three, and four, five, six, gets this, and then I'm also doing the at which function, so it's showing that we're calling that first function, and then it also gives you a line where it's at, so this is a way that you can parse your code or parse other code if you're trying to debug what you're doing. Now, if I did it again, but I'm now doing the second function, it does an entirely different operation and shows that it's pointed to the other function. And then the same idea would happen if we decided to do the third example. So me being more of a physicist, I tend to do a lot of work with arrays and matrices and vectors. And sometimes you want a different operation being performed depending on what's being inserted in the function. But I thought this would be a good example to show. Of course, don't don't do all this stuff because Julia already has defined array times scalar operations. And they already have matrix times vector operations. I kind of showed this just for simplicity, but if you think about it like RK4 or Euler's method, you can have one example that takes in a scalar argument and another one takes in a vector argument when you're looking at a system of equations. So that could be an example of multiple dispatch that you could try with your code. Now really what I want to show more is more of Unipool because Unipool is a really cool library. So part of this is showing how to extend it if you want to create your own units. But then also this is showing more of how multiple dispatch works and why, why this is so fluid. So here you can see I have a block of code that I have in the very top and we're going to go through what, what I have here. So I have a new module. I call it more units. This is the end of that module. And then I'm calling Unipool. I'm creating this constant called rad, rad earth. So this is the radius of the earth. And then I'm creating this unit with this kind of definition. So here it's RE, it's an earth radii. I'm taking that constant I have to find above. This is what it is in terms of meters. And then the false is just part of the Unifold documentation. Now these couple of lines are what's needed to extend the Unifold library. So you add this at the very bottom. And if you look up the Astro Unifold or the US Unifold libraries, they also have this, these couple of lines at the very bottom. Also pretty amazing because if you look at their libraries, it's just one file. They just extend Unifold, they have their units and it's just, it's all there. Now going back, I'm just calling that more units module. And then here I'm gonna define some of the code that can work with Unifold. All right, now, now I have this A variable. It's going to be two earth radii, and then I'm just going to print out A just to show that it all works. And we, there you go. So we have two earth radii. Now to show how it extends unit full, maybe we want to look at this in meters. So you can have A, U convert. Okay, so now we did a U convert on my earth radii unit, and it converted it to meters just, just like how unit full works. So it took my unit and converted it easy peasy. If you wanted to confirm that was correct, so we're gonna take this B unit and we're gonna define it by the rad earth constant in terms of meters. And then you can see here I have two and it's unitless because before it was meters, so now it's printing out as unitless. Okay, so let's let's talk about more why this is 
different. If we think about this more in terms of object-oriented programming, you would have some type of object that is the unit object. And then if we wanted to extend it, we would have to define a new object that inherits all those properties. And then we would define it as my units or whatever you want to call it. So that is slightly different in the sense that, yeah, your unit object will work with all the properties of the Unifold library. Maybe it won't work with other libraries that also inherit from the Unifold library. So if you think about if you define a unit and then you have some coworkers that also define their own units, and this is in terms of a different language, so it's more of the inheritance, object-oriented style, then your code doesn't necessarily work with their code. But with multiple dispatch, you're not really creating a whole new unit class, but more you're just extending the unit full library, which is a lot more of the whole idea of code reusability. Now in this example, also don't create a earth radii unit. There is an astro unit full library already, which has earth radii. But if you wanted to create your own units, let's say you want something that was non-dimensional, but you still wanted some kind of way to identify it in all your code, you could do that here. And it works easily and seamlessly with the Unifold library. And if someone else created their own units, you can work with them too. Okay, so hopefully that all connects and connects well enough. I have finals be coming up in a week, two weeks. Oh God. <laughs> I'm done there with multiple dispatch. Please give this video a like and subscribe. If you have a request, feel free to comment in the section below, tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours, or email me at DJ's Office Hours at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys next week.